Hello, Captain Clumsy here, and I'm just about to be uh, delivering my verdict on the motorcycle live amplified uh, show at the NEC, which I attended last Saturday. But no, instead of that, I'm going to do the current news, which is shock horror probe. Yet another three dealers have closed. What the heck is going on? What can you do about it? How can you avoid getting caught? How can you avoid losing money? What's the safest thing to do? And what should you do about the future? Well, let's run through what's happened and then we'll talk a little bit more about preventative safety measures and what you can do to help your local dealer. So this is the current uh, situation with Plymouth, Harley, Davidson and Triumph, which share the same site. Basically, they're literally adjacent to each other and they had both closed on the same day. They both belong to the same firm, Marsh Holdings Limited. And uh, this is the press information. And there's a little bit more to it because not only is it Triumph and Plymouth Harley Davidson, but the same firm also own Southampton Harley Davidson. And they put out a notice as well. Very sad. What's behind it? Well, we'll go into that more in a minute. That means that looking at the map, you, if you live in Cornwall, so imagine you live in Penzance and you want to buy a Harley Davidson or get your Harley Davidson serviced, get some warranty work done, get parts and accessories, you would have to drive all the way from Penzance to Bristol. Because at the moment, although uh, riders who are the nearest Harley Davidson dealership have a site at Bridgewater, which is still open, and it does do servicing, so servicing is covered. That's still, from me, 117 miles from Penzance. That's near 150 miles. They will also sell you a, a used bike. I had a nice long chat with the uh, salesman, Adrian, who uh, was very helpful indeed. He said that they would do as much as they can to help you. Uh, their own situation in Bristol, he said, was solid. They're not suffering with the same issues that some of the other dealers have. So the issues cited are overstocking, which is a manufacturer issue, slow sales, uh, which is probably more related to the economy, poor weather, again, climate related. That's where I have a word with Donald Trump about that. Various other problems, some of those not stated. If you're in a dealership or you're looking at a dealership which has got a, a large sales area, full of bikes those bikes cost money and they're sitting there on the showroom floor if they're not selling they're costing the dealer money so if they're overextended with debt uh, with mortgages rent and so forth then they've got a problem the other issues cited are uh, what was happened in the budget those are in particular the increase in, in employers national insurance contributions and of course, the increase in the national minimum wage. Now, you would hope that most staff at a motorcycle dealership would not be on minimum wage, but typically, of course, most salespeople are on commission as a fair chunk of their wages. They're probably having to work very hard for that at the moment. Slight reassurance, uh, riders of Bristol not going anywhere. You can still access riders in Bridgewater for some things, but it's still a very long trek. And also, of course, with Triumph, now the nearest dealer is at Bridge Motorcycles in Exeter. And as far as I know, last time I was there, about a week ago, everything was running fine. And I think they're probably fairly well set. But what do you do if you're looking at buying a new motorcycle today? If you're looking at uh, exchanging your bike, warranty work, servicing, etc. Would you be a little bit worried about leaving your bike at a dealership or paying over good money and then walking up the next day and finding it's closed? Because literally with these, these closures, there was no notice. They just closed on the day, yesterday. As I'm recording this, you may not get to see this for a little while, but that means you could still walk into that because I know those dealers, they're lovely places, look perfectly solid and stable, but the reality is the financial situation underneath was not. What can you do to ameliorate the situation, protect yourself and also help the industry? Well, for one thing, I would suggest don't engage in any sort of risky financial transactions, you know, hand over money and then sort of wait three months for a bike to be delivered. I would say only go to the dealership if you're 
looking at a major purchase or something of a larger nature, anything more than about £100, go there and expect to get what you want on the day. Nothing wrong with a good old fashioned cash because you hand your cash over, you get what you want and off you go. Now, of course, you could do it the modern way with a bank transfer, but the same thing applies. You pay your money, you get what you want straight away. And also, can I humbly suggest, don't go buying bikes online, don't go buying major purchases online. If you buy online, that's not going to help the dealer, is it? The money is going somewhere else, somewhere upstream to the people who, who really make the money. So there are things you can do, patronise your local dealer, even for the little things. You know, I always used to think that a little ride out to my local dealer, get some chain lube, you know, get some bike cleaner, get those little basics. That helps keeping their, their tills ticking over. Uh, it gives you a chance to meet other people there. And whilst you're in the showroom, they just might happen to catch your eye, the bike of your dreams, and then off you go. So that's what I, I would do. Try to keep using your local dealer, supporting them, and keep an eye out for what's happening. So protect yourself protect the dealers, and hopefully we can all get through this. And I think this is just a period of change in the motorcycle industry. Uh, the guy I was talking to at Riders of Bristol, very helpful, Adrian, um, <clears throat> he explained about how the situation is and was realistic about it. So obviously there are some people who've perhaps taken some risky business decisions, uh, but there's also the fact that some motorcycle manufacturers are trying to push stock at the dealers which they then can't sell and then become the dealer's responsibility. So what I would say is also ask some hard questions of the manufacturers. What are they trying to do? Of course it's a competitive world, it's difficult markets all round. There will be more changes but hopefully come next year. What Adrian said interestingly was there's been a period of expansion in the market and I think we have a period of contraction following that. So hopefully things will balance themselves out and you'll still be able to, with confidence, buy a motorcycle or other major purchase, get your warranty work done, get your accessories and still have that personal service. Because that's the important thing. For me, I could never buy a bike online. I need that interaction with the salesperson. I need the reassurance that I understand what the finance deal is. You know, I need to understand what the accessory package amounts to. And yeah, try and cut a deal. Simple as. Well, Thanks for watching this yet another bombshell. Hopefully not many more and we'll be able to go on our merry way. I'll carry on with all the other stuff I've got to do. So a summary of what happened at Motorcycle Live, so much to report from there. I'll try and make it as concise as possible and uh, reviews of what's happening in the press, website roast, more bike related stuff coming. Tons of stuff, most importantly of all, if you're watching this, please like. Please comment, please subscribe if you can. Doesn't cost anything, helps this channel grow and survive and bring you more stuff. Well, I've been Andy or Captain Clumsy. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.